Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we are going to be performing a fundamental stock analysis of the Packaging Corporation of America, ticker symbol PKG. At the time of recording this video, PKG is trading for $138.28 per share. Year to date, their stock price is up 1.6%, which compared to the overall market is actually doing pretty decent. Over the past year, they're up 2.5%. Going back three years, they're up 11% compounded annually. Over 10 years, they're up 16% compounded annually. And over the last 17 and a half years prior to the global financial crisis, Packaging Corporation of America is up about 11% annually. Keep in mind that this is not including dividends. So the business tends not to have a ton of volatility between their 52-week high and low. Currently, their stock price is situated in between the two, although it's a little closer to their low. About 2% of the company's shares outstanding are currently sold short, and PKG is about a $13 billion market cap. For some background about the business, Packaging Corporation of America is the fourth largest container board and corrugated packaging manufacturer in the United States. It produces roughly 4 million tons of container board annually. The company's share of the domestic container board market is about 10%. It differentiates itself from larger competitors by focusing on smaller customers and operating with a high degree of flexibility. Its three reportable segments are packaging, paper and corporate, and other. Packaging Corporation of America was founded in 1867 and is headquartered in Lake Forest, Illinois. So for today's fundamental analysis, we're going to be performing a modified version of the eight pillar analysis originally popularized by Everything Money taking a look at eight key financial metrics of the business and coming to a holistic and beginning understanding of PKG based on their fundamentals. So let's get right into this. Starting off here with pillar number one, we want their average five-year PE over the past five years to be below 22 and a half. Currently, they're trading at about 14 times earnings. Over this time frame, they traded as low as nine times earnings and as high as about 30 and a half times earnings. However, averaged out, they're trading at about 17 and a half times earnings. So that's gonna be our first check here on pillar number one. Pillar number two, we want their average five-year return on capital to be above 9%. Over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is gonna return approximately what its underlying business returns, and the underlying business returns are gonna be captured here by return on capital. Even though Packaging Corporation of America seems like a boring business, they're able to earn above average returns on capital that are actually pretty steady in this high teens, low 20s range. In 2020, their returns did come down to 13%, but those are still above that 9% metric we were looking for. Averaged out over this time frame, PKG is producing about an 18% return on capital, which is twice as good as what we were looking for. That's our second check here on pillar number two. Pillar number three, we're looking for five-year revenue growth. PKG has grown revenues from $6.4 billion in 2017 up to $7.7 .7 billion in 2021. They've had pretty stable and pretty steady revenue growth over this time frame. That's another check here on pillar number three. Pillar number four, we're looking for five-year net income growth. PKG has grown net incomes from $669 million in 2017 up to $841 million in 2021. So that's another check here on pillar number four. So far through four pillars, we've got four checks. Pillar number five, we're looking for decreasing shares outstanding. When you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. When a business decreases the number of shares outstanding by buying back stock, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business without you having to pay a dime. This ultimately increases the percentage of the business's profits that you're going to be entitled to now and into the future. So we want businesses that are keeping shares outstanding steady, or better yet, buying back shares at reasonable valuations. Looking at their share count here, PKG has very slightly diluted shareholders. In 2017, they had just under 94 million shares outstanding, and in 2021, that's increased to about 94 and a half million shares outstanding. So very small dilution here, marginal at best. Really, this is not something that I'd be overly concerned about as their shares outstanding are basically flat over this time frame. Pillar number six, we're looking for five-year free cash flow growth. Free cash flow is cash from operations minus capital expenditures. It's this column here in green. Free cash flow is the lifeblood of any business. 
and a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and into the future, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate, is ultimately what that business is going to be worth. Free cash flow can be used to buy back stock, pay dividends, reinvest back into the business, pay down debt, or make acquisitions. In 2017, PKG produced $513 million of free cash flow, and that has decreased. In 2021, they produced $489 million of free cash flow. So while they have been able to increase their cash from operations, they significantly increased their capital expenditures in the most recent year. So that's an X here on pillar number six. Over this time frame, in an average year, PKG is producing about $610 million of free cash flow each year. We'll be using that number coming up here in pillars number seven and eight. Pillar number seven, we want their net debt, which is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term equivalents to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by five. This pillar helps us evaluate how the business utilizes leverage. We don't want to invest in businesses that are overly levered because in hard economic times, overly levered businesses are the ones that are going to do the worst and are going to be at the most risk of bad outcomes. Be that failing, being forced to be acquired, or more likely being forced to raise money at unfavorable terms. As of the end of last year, PKG had about $2 billion in net debt. When we multiply their average five-year free cash flow of $610 million a year times five, that brings us to about $3 billion. So over the next five years, if PKG is able to produce the same amounts of cash flow that they were able to in the past five years, PKG is going to have more than a billion dollars left over after paying off all of this debt. So that is a sign that the business is using reasonable amounts of leverage here, and that's a check on pillar number seven. Finally, the big pillar of them all, pillar number eight, we want PKG's market cap to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by 20 to give us a reasonable starting valuation for the business. So currently, PKG has about a $13 billion market cap, and when we multiply their average five-year free cash flow of $610 million times 20, that brings us to about $12 billion. So we are very slightly off here. This is going to be an X on pillar number eight, but based on their abilities to produce free cash flows, it looks like PKG is about fairly valued at this point. Lastly, here we're looking at their dividend profile. People make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividend yield. And while PKG does pay out more than a three and a half percent dividend yield, it's important that you don't blindly rush in and chase dividend yield and instead you stop and consider whether a dividend is healthy and supported by the business's free cash flows so that it can be sustainable both now and into the future. So based on their dividend profile, PKG has raised their dividends in each of the last five years. Over this time frame, they've had a good amount of free cash flows that have been able to support this dividend, especially in the four years leading up to last year. Last year, they were cutting it a little close. They had a dividend payout ratio of almost 80%. So the majority of last year's free cash flows went to pay out this dividend. While they were forced to have a lot of capital expenditures last year, this is something that I would keep an eye on if PKG's dividend yield is part of your investment thesis. Ideally, we want businesses that are paying out less than 60% of their cash flows as dividend just to give them that margin of safety especially when a business potentially has other opportunities for their cash flows. So again, this is something that I'd keep an eye on here. So in summary, PKG checks the box on five out of eight pillars. The business is trading for a reasonable valuation right now based on their free cash flows and based on their earnings. It is a boring business making packaging and corrugated boxes, but the business earns above average returns on capital. They've seen growth in their revenues and net incomes over this time frame. And they've basically kept their shares outstanding flat. They've marginally diluted investors. The business employs moderate amounts of leverage and is not overly levered whatsoever. And although the business's cash flows have decreased recently, packaging is not something that's going to go away anytime soon, especially with the continued dominance of e-commerce. It looks like this business has been able to predictably and reliably produce free cash flows over this time frame. And although it's not a guarantee, that's something I'd expect to continue now and into the future. How the business's cash from operations are ultimately going to compare to its CapEx needs are something that you're just going to have to learn more about the business to fully understand. This type of analysis is a holistic and beginning understanding of Packaging Corporation of America 
It is not financial advice, and it's not a buy or sell recommendation of the business. In order to learn more about the business, I highly recommend diving into their 10K. You can read more about their business, potential risks, and get a better sense of how management is viewing the business and management's plans for capital allocation. As a value investor, in order to be comfortable investing in a business, you want to understand that business inside and out, and ultimately understand the essence of the business as if you owned 100% of the company. Packaging Corporation of America also pays out an above average dividend yield that's about twice as much as the overall market now, but in the most recent year, they did have some pressure because they made a significant raise to their dividends while their cash flows have decreased over that time frame. So that's something to keep an eye on here. With that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Packaging Corporation of America, ticker symbol PKG. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about PKG with me, and have a great day.